Welcome back to Battle Cage. It's your boy Saif, and I'm coming to you with yet another great video. Today we are looking at UFC Fight Night Lemos taking on Andrade. Now it is a <coughs> currently a 13 uh, fight card, and I've decided after looking at it to focus mostly, mostly on the main card. The prelims are questionable at best. It's um, a, a much better card, if you ask me, <coughs> excuse me, with the exception of the main event, it's a much better card overall compared to what we just had with um, Vic uh, Vicente Luque versus Bilal Mohammed. But in either case, let's just take it with a grain of salt, but focus on the very main card. So with that being said, let's go over uh, what I'm talking about. So here is the main card taking place next Saturday and we want to take uh, this as soon as possible because the lines are gonna relatively um, change soon so this is where you want to establish your position with that being said let's look at uh, UFC fight okay so main card I'm gonna talk about the obviously the main event the co-main event Tanner Bowser versus Alexander Romanov Macy Barber versus Montana De La Rosa Murar Chisu versus Manel Cap and Charles Jordan versus Lando Venado. This is the order that it's currently presented by by uh, topology. Hopefully it stays. I'm actually let me kind of let me see something. We can actually validate that or not. Let's look at UFC schedule results. <coughs> Let's look at April 23. Lemos, Clay, Tanner, Macy, Sue, Land. Yeah, so this is pretty much the main card. Um, I'll, let's let me toggle along between that and that. So, for the most part, for my presentations, I utilize topology, but we're going to be tagging, toggling along between UFC and that for a much better presentation. So if you haven't, I mean, if you just simply haven't um, seen my recap of the results that happened, make sure you check out in my previously recorded video where I talk about, that's already posted, uh, that I talk about my betting, res betting results and the overall picks. We did very well, uh, at least here at Battle Cage. I did, you know, exceptionally well, actually. Uh, yeah, it was a last-minute calls on certain things, but you know what? The best things happened to those that wait, and I was very patient up until the last point, and I decided to pull a trigger on Bilal Muhammad. Go figure, right? But we are focusing on this this week's card, right? So let's go back. Here we are, and uh, let's talk about the very first card, the very first fight. It's the main event. I'm going to go from top to bottom for, for, for this video. Amanda Lamos versus Jessica Andrade. It is going down uh, between the girls. And Jessica Andrade is coming down back to the flyweight. It's a flyweight fight. Uh, I'm sorry, strawweight. I apologize. It is a strawweight fight, 115. So she did move up to flyweight. She had a, a nice win, of, of a body hook to Caitlin Kokagan in her debut. She then obviously suffered. Excuse me. Then she obviously suffered a loss to Valentina Shevchenko, the, the, the champion. And this was at uh, 125. And then she bounced back via uh, a nice KO against a Cynthia Calveo. Very good one for her. But it looks like she's coming down to uh, straw weight. I don't really know why that is unless she really wants to. You know, she didn't do too bad at um on flyweight maybe because she has no chance of beating valentina shevchenko and she understands that and now she wants to go back to flyweight because at least at least there's a small chance she's going to beat rose namayunas if rose namayunas successfully defends her title in may with against carla esparza so with that being said i guess that's her rationale she's a younger girl here she's 30 years old versus you know Amanda Lemos, she was 34 and, and 11. She's about to be 35, literally in a month. Um, yeah, so what do I think? I really like Amanda Lemos. I really, really, really do. 
but I respect Jessica's Andrade power to the max. At five foot one, you know, she is a powerhouse. I mean, this picture, let me go back to the picture so you guys can understand. This picture, um, hold on a second. Pardon me. I'm bugging out a little bit. Bugging out. This picture right here, Jessica Andrade, okay? Take a look at her muscles. This is her traps, where my mouse cursor is. You see her muscles? I mean, this girl, I'm like 195. I gained a lot of weight. And my arms are like half the size of, of her arms. I mean, this is just incredible. I mean, look at this physique. I don't even know how this is fair. Uh, to be honest, I don't know how this is possible. So this girl packs a lot, a lot of power for her size. In technicality, if we're speaking from a pure techni techni uh, technical you know, aspect of fighting, I really like Amanda Lemos here. But I'm just wondering, why did it take this young lady to only have 12 fights in her entire career? Well, she started pretty late, 2014, perhaps. Jessica Andrade, on the other hand, being 30 years old. This girl, man, this woman has been in the game since 2011. So perhaps this, you know, three, four years ahead of ahead of her, but she went on a massive, massive berserk of fights. I mean, she was really, really fighting, you know what I'm saying? Coming to UFC, she's fighting with everyone. She's fighting with Liz Carmouche, Rosie Sexton, Raquel Pennington. She beats in a split. Can you believe that? Can, that she actually beat Raquel Pennington. I mean, seeing what Raquel Pennington has done as of yet is just mesmerizing. And for her to beat Raquel Pennington at 135, like this girl fought at 135. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, this is just, this is just like me talking right now. And I'm just saying I like I love Rocky, but for her to beat Rocky at 135, and guess what? She was a moderate favorite in that fight I mean you really gotta respect Jessica Andrade here and she was only 22 years old taking on a you know a pretty pretty up in there you know 25 year old Ra uh, Raquel Pennington so hey you know what I'm saying let's give credit what credit is due now she fought uh Rocky we talked about um Larissa Pacheco she did suffer a loss to Marin Marion Renew back in 2015, bounced back against uh, Sarah Mar Maras here. Um, she ran it back with Raquel Pennington. Uh, perhaps this is where she kind of decided to move down, where she lost to Raquel Pennington when Rocky, you know, got up her weight. You know, two years is a long time, and she is really undersized. And then you see her, you know, moving down, Jessica Panay, Joanne Wood, Angela Hill back in 2017, and here's her fighting Joanna Jujacic. That's Jujacic's time. 2017 is all about Joanna Jujacic. And then she goes back to the drawing board. Here she takes out Claudia uh, Gadella, Tisha Torres. You know, big names here, okay? Uh, KK, uh, Carolina Kalokiewicz, who's no longer here anymore. Rose Nama Yunus, believe it or not, she had that weird slam. It's not like she, you know, she just picked Rose up and she just suplexed her on her neck and that's how she won that fight um so with that being said she did win that fight she became the champion uh at at uh at Stroid 115 she then fights Li Zhang and she gets absolutely pummeled out of there uh in 42 seconds then she fights Rose Namayunis loses a split it was a very 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 close fight up until the very end when Rose Namajunas became Rose Thug Namajunas and she was able to weather the storm and seal the deal. But in either case, that, that's what happened. That's when she again decides to move up. She's now at 125. She fights Caitlin Kokagan. She loses to the champion, obviously. I think that was a stupid fight to make. She had no business of fighting the champion after one win against Caitlin. Now, you could argue Caitlin was, was number two who was just coming off. Um, excuse me who was just coming off a win herself 
uh, I mean, who, who, who was coming off a fight herself against um, Valentina Shevchenko. So you could say that, you know, that's, you know, that's good to make that fight. But I think it was not, she was not ready. You know what I'm saying? She should have had another fight. And here you go. So she fights another fight at, you know, against Cynthia Calveo here. And um, she wins by punches. So again, this girl is not bad. You know, same thing with uh, with her opponent, uh, Amanda Lemos, you know, 11-1. She's really good, um, but she is getting up there in age, you know what I'm saying? And she had a, you know, a really, you know, an easier path here. So she fights Angela Hill, you know, Montserrat Ruiz, you know, all these girls that I'm going to name, they all get murked. They all get destroyed by Jessica Andrade. Montserrat Ruiz, you think Montserrat gives her problems? No, she's probably getting knocked out as well. Lavina Sosa, uh, maybe this one is tough. She's tough. This girl is tough. Okay, uh, also ripped to the core, but you can see she's picking up L's. So it is what it is, right? Now we go down. Here's Mizuki, Miranda Granger. So again, a much lesser names. Think about the name power that I just went through. Big names for Jessica Andrade, Raquel Pennington, Shevchenko. Um, who else? She's been with Weili Zhang, Rose Namajunas, you know what I'm saying? K Caitlin Kogan. She's been around a much heavier competition. I am not going to waste your time. As much as I want to pick Amanda Lamos, I simply can't. And thus, we're going to go with Jessica Andrade. Now, I got a little thing going over here. Uh, with all my picks so if you just want to quickly look at my picks and stop this video just before you do make sure you give me a like and subscribe and comment down below and let me know if you agree with my picks or not it would really really uh, help me a lot and i'm going to appreciate it heavily so these are my picks guys i'm not going to waste any time tell you guys right away these are my picks uh, but if you want to stay around for more technical breakdown keep watching so let's go back. So again, the pick is Amanda, uh, I'm sorry, Jessica Andrade, current line, minus 165, and I'm content with that. So let's move down along, okay? We have Clay, the carpenter, Guida taking on um, Claudio Puelas. Before I go any further, I'd I would like to extend um, a round of applause for Clay the Carpenter Guida, who is simply, you know, you know, such a fun time to watch sometimes, and he's an OG. So let's give him the credit where credit is due. Let's give him a round of applause. Now, with that being said, unfortunately, I'm going to go against Clay the Carpenter Guida here. I think Clay the Carpenter Guida is going to be running into a relatively, you know, stylistically stronger fighter here. And he got the youth, this guy, El Nino uh, Cuereopolis, and I really liked what I saw from him. This knee bar came out of nowhere, which means he's a very sneaky, dangerous guy. He beat Jordan Levitt, and which is a good account, right? Jordan Levitt has been doing work, so that's a good win. Marcos uh, Mariano and Felipe Silva. So, and again, look at that knee bar. Look at he looks like that's something in his arsenal. Okay, so we need to be cognizant of it. Uh, as much as I want to back Clay Guida, I just simply cannot. Now, I know he, he looked really good against Leonardo Santos uh, via a rear naked choke. But again, he's going on against a submission specialist himself because even though he's not like a major specialist, let's look at his uh, record here. Um, even in his earlier days, right, in his amateur, he's getting arm bars and rear naked chokes. And look at this his submissions. He has six submissions wins uh, in his professional career. I'm sorry, in his overall career. You have to, have to, have to respect that submission here. So I'm not really worried about it. So that's already done. The next thing, I'm looking at the age. 26 years old versus 40. I mean, guys, that's a huge, huge 
difference. It makes a lot of difference here. Why? Because he's just going to be so much more faster, so much more, you know, uh, able to respond to uh, multiple hits, you know, you know, his reaction speed is going to be much, much quicker here. Another thing I want you to take a look at, it's his height. He's 5'11 to 5'7, so he will be the bigger guy, and he has a slight 2-inch reach advantage. Now, Clay Guida is coming from Elevation Fight Team, and you got to give him the respect for that because that's a really good gym. But I'm just going to go with the youth, and I'm going to be calling a fade on Clay Guida, unfortunately, and I'm going to be picking Claudio Puelas here. He can be half four uh, plus money, if I'm not mistaken. So here's Claudio Puelas. Claudio Puelas, I'm sorry, let me change screen. Claudio Puelas here is plus money at plus 115. By the way, guys, by the way, very important, okay? Uh, the book that I'm going to be referencing as of right now is Bet MGM. It is perhaps my favorite new book. Ever since I have went on Bet MGM, I have been winning consistently. I like their lines. They're much better lines, and I'm going to show it to you. They're be they have better lines, and some of their over-unders are just beautiful. Uh, FanDuel is very, very, at least here in New York. I don't know how they are in different places. In New Jersey, I love FanDuel. In New York, I hate FanDuel. That's why I got to play with, oops, sorry. I got to play with what I have. So in New York, FanDuel sucks. I'm just going to go on record. I love FanDuel. You guys know I always mention FanDuel. However, the this the last these two weeks I have been playing Bet MGM and I love it. So one, they give you better lines. Two, they give you rewards. Like believe it or not, they give you free bets. They give you uh, absolutely free bet, bet, bets. You know what I'm saying? They'll give you a fifty dollar free bet. Uh, they give you a match deposit for up to two, fifty dollars. Sometimes up to a match to a hundred dollars. I have taken those wins and i kid you not i have i have I'm, I'm, I'm on record you guys already know i'm validated if you haven't seen my last video by the way that big win from Bilal muhammad came from bet mgm i bet i i use their lines and i bet um there uh, and the earl spence uh parlay with Bilal and kai borello also on bet mgm again i'm not going to you know lie to you it's the, the truth so they have better lines they give you rewards and uh, the final thing is, which is, to me personally, this alone is 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 automatic. When you withdraw from Bet MGM, at least for me, I, I I hope, and I'm I'm not the only one. I actually spoke to one of my one of my other colleagues who loves Bet MGM. Guys, the payment is so fast within one hour. I kid you not. Oh, I got like fifty four hundred cash out in one hour. How amazing is that when you're cashing out so fast, when the money is like that? You know, um, FanDuel is not bad, but it takes like a day or so to get, to go back to your account. Sometimes more, maybe like up to 48 hours, maybe 72 hours sometimes. Uh, so in terms of payment processing, they are super, super good. And I got to gotta share it with you. I love Bet MGM, And in the description, I am going to put um my referral link okay if you're not playing with bet mgm consider signing up with them with my promotion if i refer a friend i believe there you go right here the more the merrier if i refer you guys with bet mgm you get 50 bucks i get 50 bucks after you make your deposit you know the usual nonsense but bet mgm has been saving my behind and i'm not joking now just a quick comparison okay and then we move forward. Here's Bet MGM. Uh, 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 here's Amanda Lemos. I'm sorry, Jessica Andrade, minus 165. Let's compare that to um, FanDuel. That's why I have both of them open here. Let's look at uh, that main card. Give me a second. Scroll, 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 scroll. Where is she? Sometimes, you know, it's so hard. There, I found the line. Jessica Andraj on FanDuel is minus 188. On BetMGM, it's minus 165. I absolutely love that. That's, that's a big discrepancy, guys. So in this game, you want to look for better value, and that's what I started. So there's, there is no loyalty with these books, okay? Look for the better value. Look for better rewards. 
And I found that with BetMGM. I'm still going to play with FanDuel, you know what I'm saying? But as of right now, I am playing with BetMGM. And I strongly con uh, urge you to consider that. So if you do want to check it out, and you could get 50 bucks, okay? And, and that's going to help me. That's going to help you. Let me use my referral in the description. We both get 50 bucks, and let's make money this weekend, okay? Uh, let's go back. So, we are now in the co-main event. Claudio Puelas is plus 115. At FanDuel, it's plus 100. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. So, I am going to go with Claudio Puelas at plus money, and that is in my bet slip, okay? Um, officially, guys, officially. This is all official now. That's why I decided to bring you this type of presentation. And uh, moving forward, I think that's where I'm going to be, especially with the early picks, okay? Um, that way you kind of know where my head is at moving forward. Let's move to the third fight from the top. We have Alexander Romanov taking Tanner Bowser. This is perhaps the most, um, the most, uh, I guess, intriguing fight for Romanov here as Tanner Bowser is incredible. In terms of his stylistic matchup for here, he is patient, um, and look at his record. He is—he it's a pretty decent record for a heavyweight, believe it or not, at a low, low tier, uh, low uh, tier level. Now, when I say incredible, don't think I think Tanner Bowser is just like this. Whoa, Tanner Bowser! No, what I'm saying is that Tanner Bowser is very, very methodical, but but you cannot take away what the Moldovian. Uh, King Kong, Alexander Romanov has been doing. And I would be an absolute liar if I would have said that I see Tanner Bowser uh, winning this fight. However, I do think Tanner Bowser is his toughest um, fight to date. That's why I call that shit incredible. Don't think he's like super incredible. So, Tanner Bowser is the toughest opponent for Alexander Romanov, but Romanov is a monster okay he has been running through all of his opponents granted they're not the most big names uh two of them are super cans but here he comes in roque martinez right can he beats marcos rogerio de lima semi okay he beats juan espino very good fight technical split decision so you know espino really pushed him so that's a good good opponent for him and Jared Vendera, who's a can, as you can see, as as you saw. So two cans, uh, and that before that, this guy is slamming dudes. He's punching them out. He's choking them out. He's really damn good. I like Alexander Romanov. However, please be careful here uh, because the money line is absolute garbage. Here's Romanov at minus five hundred. And notice he's not in the bed slip because I just cannot find value at minus 500, okay? Now, I don't have the inside the distance play, but that's something that could be considered moving forward. But take a look. The lines are not available yet, so we have to be patient. We're going to take Alexander Romanov here. However, I, I like him inside the distance. If he's juiced at... If he's juiced at 500, I'm going to take a chance inside the distance. I think it's going to be a very relatively good line because uh, Tanner Bowser, believe it or not, can, can. He has the ability to extend this fight into the later rounds, maybe two, three. And, you know, I just hope he's durable uh, for, the, for his own sake because if it's not, he's going down. He's going to get pummeled by Alexander Romanov. He's really that damn good. So if, if I'm going to play Romanov, it's going to be inside the distance. And depending on what the over-under is, I'd like to check it out, okay? Back to the screen. So the pick is Romanov, no surprise. Uh, but Tanner Bowser, you know, you, he's he's the toughest opponent uh, for Alexander Romanov. Don't forget, this Tanner Bowser is the same Tanner Bowser that... um. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, hold on a second. Mm. Or maybe I'm confusing him with somebody. Am I confusing him with somebody? I am. I am confusing him. But anyway, he has a win against Felipe Lenz. Can. Rafael Pasesso. Can. Loses to Volkanovski. Loses to Latifi. Gets 
killed by OSP at the heavyweight division. So, yeah, let's go with Romanov. Most likely, I'm going to be playing the inside the distance play over here. We're moving forward. I'm not going to waste your time here. I will tell you where I'm at. I am going to be with my girl, the future Macy Barber. I know her last win is super controversial against Miranda Maverick. She only won the third round. I know. But I had the ticket on Macy, and I cashed that ticket, and pat on the back, I was on the right side of the robbery, because I think it was a robbery. Nevertheless, she is giving up some size to Montella De La Rosa, um, but what, from what I've seen, this girl, her biggest problem thus far, and she's very young, 23 years old, I'm sure she went through those two L's and she learned from it, is her you know, lack of output, and that's what's really been killing her, so... If she f addressed that, she should be able to take out Montella De La Rosa. In terms of physicality, I think she's much better than Montella De, De La Rosa. Um, you know, Montella De La Rosa, however, is coming from a good gym, Elevation Fight Team. So you got to respect that, right? I have nothing but respect for Elevation Fight Team. I mean, look who's there. Alistair, Neil Magny, you know, Drew Dobers, Justin Gaethje. You know what I'm saying? Like, they have amazing team. They Corey Anders, uh, Corey Sanhagen. You know what I'm saying? Here's Montella De La Rosa, J.J. Aldridge. So she really has a lot of good people there. Here's Miranda Maverick. So she is getting good work there. It's not like she's not getting good work. She is getting good work. However, I'm going to go with Macy Barber because I just think she's she has a greater ceiling of potential. And, you know, I've been, I've been high on her. Now, I did... I was extremely surprised she lost to Roxanne Mataferi, but believe it or not, when she was like, when Mataferi is plus 500, I'm like, this is where you got to play Mataferi at plus 500, and get, look at that, look what she did, and Alexa Grasso, you know, took out uh, uh, Macy Barber, but again, that's because, that's because she didn't let her hands go, okay, and she's, Alexa Grasso is a good fighter from, from what we've seen. So now, you know, she bounces back, and I think that's a good confidence booster for her, and I'm hoping that's just, you know, what she needed to get back on, on, the, on the saddle, back on the horse, and, and continue in her journey. So I'm going to be backing Macy Barber, although I like, I like uh, Montella De La Rosa, but this win against Arian Levski is not, um, it's not like a big deal for me. I'm not even going crazy on that. So Macy Barber, the future at minus 175 is my pick. And look, if I was going to take Macy Barber, uh, where is she? Where's Macy? If I was going to play Macy in FanDuel, um, she's minus 188. Come on. I don't want to do that. I'd rather take it at minus 175. Smart plays. MGM is delivering the better lines. I'm going, I'm rolling with them. Okay. Now, where am I? Okay. So that's that. Uh, that's that. So Macy Barber is the pick, and we're going to go with her. Um, as you can see, I already pre-selected it. So now we are going to roll down with Sue Muraderci versus Manal Cap. Manal Cap, you know, started with uh, a relatively a rocky introduction. But again, UFC really thought high of him because they gave him um, killers off the bat. They gave him... They gave him Alexander Pantoja. They gave him Mateus Nikolaou off the bat. That's crazy, right? Uh, they And then he has to come back. So here's he's coming back against Ode Osborne. But a little asterisk. Remember, he missed weight. He was like 129 there. So four pounds over. I don't really think that's too professional. And then he wins against Zaglas Zumaglolov via punches. And Zaglas is not like a top tier. Now... He is taking on Sumo de Derchi. Is he super tired here? No. Here, he lost to Haubin Ma. He lost to Louis Smolka via a, a submission on bar. But then he bounced back against Andre. He bounced back against Malcolm Gordon. And his last win was against um, Zura Khadeshev. Uh, you know, this is a very close fight. I... I just... You know, I'm, I'm, I really... I'm hoping Sue doesn't get knocked out here by Manel Cap, and if he doesn't get knocked out by Manel Cap, I really see him winning, and I really see him taking um, this fight and beating um, Manel Cap, uh, because he's just gonna, like, outpoint him and out-volume, uh, 
uh, because the physicality, he's 5'8 to 5'5, it's going to be pronounced. He's 72, his 72 reach advantage is much better than 68, so that's again significant, that's four inch, four inches, that's like a half a fist. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Sumo Muradarchi here. Am I super confident? Uh, not necessarily here. And I'm interested to see what the other cappers are thinking. And uh, I want to speak to Los Dax in our uh, weekly uh, show. And I want to know his mind on this fight. But I really like Su Murderci. I don't know. Am I really going to play him heavy? Not necessarily here. But I am going to use him as a parlay booster in what I'm cooking up over here. So, jumping over here. Su Murderci is, again, a plus money pick. And, by the way, as you can see, I pick plus money too, okay? It's not always about the favorites. I pick plus money where, where I think there is value. And here there is value. Uh, as you can see, I pulled a big trigger, 17.5 units on Bilal, and he was plus money. So, there's not just, you know, I'm a plus money chaser, okay? I'll be honest with you. Uh, with that being said, Sumur Derchi is the plus money pick. But as you can see, there is some justification and some rationale uh, why I am doing that. So let's go here. And that basically capsule. Uh, yeah, so basically the last fight is the bottom uh, of the uh, of the main card. It's probably going to be the last thing that I'm going to focus on. So Charles Jordan coming off a spectacular win against... Um, Lando Venata. If you didn't watch the fight, rewatch the fight with Charles Jordan versus Andre Yule. Literally at the last second, the man does Sparta kick. You know when he kicks the guy, this is Sparta, and he kicks that. It was that type of kick against Andre Yule, and Andre Yule just literally flies out. So I like that. You know, he's 26 years old. He has a really good, you know, uh, physical frame on him. He's 5'9. He has 69 reach. You know, he's in re relatively good um, shape. I, I like Jean Jordan. Now, I know he had like a pretty rocky uh, road so far in the past five fights. Uh, in the past five fights, he has a split loss against Andre Feely. He has a split. Uh, was this a draw? Yeah, a split decision draw. Let me see this. Hold on. What happened here? Draw. A split draw decision here, a W against Marcelo Rojo. Here he lost against Julian Arosa via submission Darsh choke. Okay, that was a very, very good win for Julian Rosa, in my opinion. And then he looked spectacular, you know, as, as best as he, as he ever looked against Andre Yule, who was a bigger guy, by the way. If you look over here, Air Jordan, uh, Charles, Rose, uh, uh, Charles Air Jordan. I really like that name, uh, Air you know, like Air Jordan. <laughs> so, Andre Yule, and right here, we wanted to look at um, the draw. No. What was I doing? Am I bugging out? Oh, yeah, yeah, Andre Yule, we wanted to look at. Yeah, look at this guy. 5'8, so had a pretty good uh, frame, and his reach was 75. So, that's where he really won, it was against the reach. So, I had massive reach advantage. Um, Andre Yule has like long, ridiculously long arms for his frame. He's taking on Lando Venata, who also bounced back from a loss. He lost to Bobby Green, no surprise. And then he bounced back in a very, very close fight, split decision, win against Mike Grandi. So, my verdict is very simple. I like Air Jordans. I like Jordan. I like Air Jordan. Give me Air Jordan, 26 years old. You know, like I said, I think, you know, progressively, he's, he's just a better fighter, in my opinion. I'm going to go with Air Jordan here. Um, his line is currently, um, pa, 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 where is Jordan right here? Minus five, minus 150. And that's where I want to be because if the line gets a little bit heavier and it goes, you know, past 150, you're looking at 165, 170, even minus 190. I, I really don't want to take that step on Jordan, but a minus 150 from what I've you know, what I've gathered and what I've seen thus far, I think it's good enough for me. So my pick is Air Jordan, and as you can see, I have him in my bed slip. i taking this guy. So that's my main card. I'm going to wrap it up. We have, in the main event, we have Amanda Lemos. We have, in the co-main event, 
uh, a feed on uh, Clay Guida. I'm going to take the, the younger guy at plus 115. And again, let's take, a, take another a moment, okay? Let's regather ourselves. Let's go to Clay Guida. And if I lose against Clay Guida, I deserve to lose on Clay Guida uh, because I'm disrespecting him. But I'm going to give him an, a, another round of applause, okay? And basically fade the, the living crap out of him. I'm going to go against Clay Guida. I'm probably... I'm probably crazy for it, but it's okay. I like Claudio Puelas. He is the younger guy, and I like what I see, and what I see is what I see. Next fight, we said we're going to be backing uh, Alexander Romanov, but I'm not touching plus 500 at all. I'm probably going to touch him inside the distance. Separate bet. Um, what else? We said we like Macy Barber, the future, so I grabbed her minus 175. I don't want her to get to minus 200 and then, you know, w want to pick her, but then pay 200. Why? No, I don't want to do that to myself. So I'm going to pick her now and hope I did the right decision early. So Macy Barber is my pick. I hope she lets her hands go early this time and really wins the first round. Because if she wins the first round, that confidence is going to steamroll uh, into the second round should, should it go there. And she's just going to win, okay? The next guy we said we like is Sumo Roderci, a plus money. Um, you know, if this was a parlay, Sumo Roderci is probably the, the weakest link. So you could take him out if you don't want to do it. I like this parlay. It's a five-leg parlay, 50 bucks. So all I need is really one person to join BetMGM who doesn't have the account. You make the deposit. You get an extra 50. I get an extra 50. I'm playing that parlay. So somebody make it happen, okay? I'm sure it's some, somebody's going to make it happen. In either case, guys, those are my picks. Once again, Air Jordan, Macy Barber, Claudia Polis, Sumo Roderci. That's my biggest, weakest link uh, if this is a parlay. So be careful. Um, but I still, I'm still still rolling with Sue because I think I really, I really, I really have a personal thing with Manel Cap. I think he's just crap of a person and I don't, I don't like him. And I don't really think he's that good. Okay, let's just let me just go on record. I don't really don't think he's that good. In any case, let's go against him. I'm gonna go with Sumo Roderci, and I'm gonna go with Jessica Andraj in the main event, like I mentioned before. So, guys, thank you. It's 37 minutes in just the main card, but I wanted to focus mainly on my biggest biggest place. The rest of the picks, if you are interested, comment down below. I'll let you know. But really quick, this is like a bonus thing. If you look in the in the whole card, okay. If you look in the entire card, it's uh, the rest of the card is just crap, uh, like crap. Like Dean Barry, who's minus a thousand. You can go shoot yourself in the head with that line. I'm not doing that. Mike Jackson, like, look at this guy. Look at this record. This is like a Bellator guy. Why is this happening? Why do we have a zero one in the UFC? Who who is Mike Jackson? I, I really don't know. I'm going to... Oh, he's a boxer? Is he, he's a boxer? Is that what it is? Well, who is this guy? I mean, seriously. Mike Jackson, 37 years old. I don't I don't want to talk about it. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to get a headache. Why am I even talking about Mike Jackson? A 37-year-old Mike Jackson. Here, if you don't believe me, he's 37 years old. Like, for real. Uh, and he's 0-1 and, and he's fighting in the UFC. Is this like a prank? I don't know if this is a prank. Hold on. Look. 37 years old, Mike Jackson. Anyway, right. So we have that fight. Then we have, you know, Marcy uh, Pracnio versus Philippe Lenz. That's a suspect fight over right there. I don't like it. It's a coin flip in my opinion. You know, Eori Lang versus Cameron Elsie. Come on, bro. Like, I can't do that. Uh, then you have someone, Tyson Pedro, who hasn't fought in three years. He's fighting Ike Villanueva. Come on now. I'm not even going to disrespect you guys with reviewing that. You know, Dwight Grant versus Sergey, who hasn't fought in two years, in like three years or something. Last fight was like in 2019 against Hustam Kaleb or something like that. Again, I'm I don't want to talk about it. The only real fight that might be interested is Jordan Wright versus Mark Andre, and that line is not even available right now because it's a last minute re replacement. Uh, Mark Andre is stepping on. He's replacing um, Roman Kapilov, who was scheduled originally scheduled to fight. Um, 
Jordan Wright. Jordan Wright, the American, uh, the, uh, the Beverly Hills Ninja, he is fun to watch. You know, say what you want. He's fun to watch. He's a kill or be killed kind of guy. Same thing with Mark Andre. Expect violence. I don't think the fight is going the distance. Slightly in the Mark Andre, but I'd like to see the lines available. Luis Cossi, who, you know, who let us down in the debut versus Preston Parsons. Same story. I am not going to touch this. So I'm not going to waste your time talking about these fights if it's not necessary like i said the only one is probably jordan wright versus mark andre barriott is worth even touching and talking about my bread and butter is going to be in the main event here i'm going to be primarily invested as you can see so these are all my plays as of money line picks my bad my phone uh, my computer is about to die let me charge it okay perfect um, this is where i want to be kind of and this is a good parlay for me to start and then i'm going to you know, play around with these money lines in different combinations with this with different sports. Uh, Tyson Fury is fighting, so perhaps I can combine uh, that with Tyson Fury. As you saw, I played uh, Bore Kai Borello. I got lucky with it, but I did play him. Uh, even though if it wasn't for the league and strike, he still probably would have won the fight. He was dominating. Um, him, I added Earl Spence and, you know, put a, like a dog in there, um, Bilal Muhammad. So, don't be afraid to use my picks and mix and match and, you know, do cross-sport promotion, especially if you have a very confident play on basketball. Combine it, you know, even in an early week. Uh, maybe you like Brooklyn Nets tonight. Take that, combine it with this. Like I said, you can do things. These are just my pick, picks, and I, I play around them in different combinations. I'm coming off a very good night, um, a very good week. weekend. Started rough. Uh, Bellator kind of, you know, sticked it in, in me. Uh, 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 initially, but I was able to weather the storm, and at the end of the day, you know, I was able to get my money, and that's what it's what it's all about. Uh, that's what it's all about, chichings. Okay, the pennies, the pennies that we we're trying to make, but I made really good up um, units, thirty-four units up. That's really good for me. I'm I'm very I'm very satisfied. I'm very very grateful, and I want you to make money too, guys. So these are my picks in the main event. Don't waste your time looking for in the in the prelims if unless you really love it i'm not another thing is i had a pretty good successful first stream okay considering everything that i wasn't even prepared i will be prepared for s saturday i'm gonna do a live stream for ufc so subscribe now like now sign up to bet mgm you get 50 i get 50 we both make 50 we play a parlay and if this parlay hits, by the way, if this parlay hits, take a look. Give me a second. If this parlay hits 50 bucks for a band, how great would that be? I mean, I'll I'll be happy and I'll put 50 bucks. I I will put 50 bucks. So, with that being said, um I think I think I've said everything I needed to. I appreciate you guys stopping by. It's 43 minutes. I've I've talked more than I need to. And um have a blessed Sunday. For those of you who are watching this on Sunday, have a great week. Um, make that money. Hustle hard. Don't quit your job because of betting. Work. Uh, don't do it <laughs> unless you become you know you know self sufficient and independent. Uh, but yeah, focus on your work first. Bets second. Uh, focus on your family. You know, focus on your health. Okay, very important. Health is priceless. Focus on that. Uh, that's basically the small little take-home message, you know, focus on your family, on yourself, focus on your job, take care of your kids, uh, do what's necessary, um, and then make some money next week, you know, if, if we're right, and I'm hoping we're right. Stay tuned for Wednesday, on Wednesday's episode of Edge Out featuring Lost Tax. We're going to be looking a little bit more in detail. I Maybe he has some action on, on, uh, on prelims. Knowing him, he's probably like me. He's going to be focused on the main card. Um, so without further ado, your boy is out. Thank you so much. Take care. God bless. Remember, like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'm out of here.